start Lazarus and Carver, no. and then bring in Morton, and, and he'll, he'll, he'll alternate the them on every play. The whole game. Just kind of orchestrate the thing, you know. If there's a long run, bring it up, and I'll wait for you. Yeah. Okay. And if there's a TD, you know, bring it up full. I don't care if you drown me out, and then I'll wait you down. Good afternoon, college football fans. It's homecoming here on the campus of Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah, and the BYU Cougars today host the Rebels from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. It's another Saturday afternoon, and Paul James is on the air for another play-by-play -play broadcast of a BYU football game. Hundreds of thousands of faithful Cougar fans, coast to coast and off and beyond, are sitting by their radios, listening to Paul's vivid description of all the action. Kicking off from the south end of the field. He gets the go-ahead. Phillips approaches the ball. High end-over-end -end kick. Sikahima watches it sail over his head right between the goal posts, and Brigham Young will put the ball into play first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. But there's more to doing an exciting play-by-play -play than just showing up on game day and talking into a microphone. Paul secludes himself at home for hours each week before a game. And as he listens to the opera music of Luciano Pavarotti, he draws up spotting charts, devours statistics, and memorizes names and numbers. This week, he's preparing for the BYU Nevada Las Vegas game. I make out this chart for the team to keep track of passing and running yardage. Then I make out this chart that shows each individual on the team how much yardage they've rushed for, how many passes they've caught. I make out this chart that uh, shows comparative statistics between BYU and Las Vegas. Here's another chart that you make out that shows exactly how the scoring went in the ball game. Because you forget. This has been a ball game of big plays, both offensively and defensively. From the 20-yard line, Sam King back to throw. Swings one across, yeah. complete at the middle to the 25, to the 30, 35 to the 40, to the 50, to the 45, and finally cut from behind is Michael Morton. I have people that I've worked with for years, and they know what I'm looking for. They know that on a kickoff, they're looking to see who is back there. I'm, I may be up reading a commercial, and I haven't got time to look to see who the two men are that are lined up for the kickoff or for a punt, but they know. So I look down, and they've got that. I know that Mark Lyons over here has got track of how many passes Steve Young or Sam King has completed. And so I know right where everything is. I know where to look for. If I, if I don't know the information, I know where to find it right at my fingertips. Sam King has now completed 13 passes for 257 yards. And with a minute 12 remaining, the Rebels are in BYU territory. King 80. Back 80 is, um, he's the flanker back. Uh, Hambrick, H-A-M, Hambrick is it? Mm -hmm. Hambrick, 80 is Hambrick the flanker back, okay. 21. I don't usually memorize the uh, linemen from the offensive team, but you need to have the names of the wide receivers and the running backs instantly because you, normally you don't have time to look down. If you see 29 carrying the ball, you don't have time to look down and see it. You, you need to know immediately that it's Scott Pettis. There's a handoff to Pettis. Pettis will score. Touchdown, Pettis. In the right corner. Let's go on the offense. Okay. I gotta get those interior alignment just quickly. Right, just the backfield or Oh, right? just hit them all. And it just makes the names of the numbers okay. up again. It's he memorizes very quickly. Once in a while, uh, he might not have had time to memorize like he'd really like to. And on the way down, just five minutes, he'll just have the team ready. It amazes me how quickly he memorizes. <laughs> Game day is a long day for a play-by-play -play man like Paul. He arrives at the stadium a couple of hours before game time and seldom gets home until many hours after the contest is over. His main job is to describe action on the playing field. But nearly as important is the background information, the little tidbits from coaches and players that add color to a broadcast. BJ. And I never played football, but I know the rules of the game, and I don't think you can do a broadcast without knowing the rules of the game. In other words, something happens out on the field, and if you don't know what the rules are, you're making all kinds of wild speculation as to what is happening. If you know the rules, generally you can tell what's happening out on the field. The flag is down, and a penalty, obviously, 
is against uh, Las Vegas if there is a penalty, but I think King probably downed the football. I still tape record all my ball games, and I come home and listen to them. And I really get down on myself when I come home and listen to a game, and I use the same phrase over and over for the same play. And I think, doggone, if I say that again, I'm going to kick myself. Young is standing there looking. Now Young throws long and deep for Plater, and it is intercepted. No, it is caught. Yes, it is intercepted. People see sports as being a very glamorous thing, and that part of it is. But the part they don't see is sitting for five hours, filling out tedious little forms and sheets and so on, and all the hours of preparation, staying up to one or two o'clock in the morning, reading through press brochures, memorizing names and numbers. They don't see all, all the background work that is not fun and glamorous. Do you enjoy it? I love it. I love it. Steve Young, quarterback, keep right up the middle. He breaks into the secondary. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and out of bounds. 